Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. The other day, the folks from Roku sent me their new Roku Express to check out. This is the lowest cost entry level device in Roku's lineup, and we will be doing a full review of this soon. But I thought I would do in this video is just run through the setup process because these are not hard to set up, but I know a lot of folks looking at these things maybe are a little intimidated by the whole process. So I'm gonna step through it uh, each way and get this thing hooked up to my television so you can see how these devices get operating. And I'll give you some tips once we get it working about their mobile app that I think might enhance the value of this as well. So we're going to uh, take this out of the box in a second and get it all set up. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Roku. However, they are not paying for this video, nor are they reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and get this Roku unboxed and hooked up. Now, before we take this out of the box, I do suggest you set up a Roku account on your phone or computer first. And to do that, you need to go over to Roku.com. And I would suggest you type this address in directly on your browser rather than searching for it. Because over the years, there have been scammers that try to get you over to their website and they charge you money to set up the account. There is never a charge to get a Roku up and running. So if you go direct to Roku.com, you will be able to get things operating pretty quickly. Now you can go over here to sign in, and if you don't have an account, you can create one by clicking on this button here. One thing to note though, is that Roku does require a credit card to be registered to your account. It's not gonna charge you anything for it unless you subscribe to something, but they do require a payment method on file before you can get one of these things up and running. All right, so with that out of the way, let's unbox this and see what comes inside. So we will open up the box and take the unit out here. So there's not much to this, especially on the low end version here. So we've got uh, our little instruction quick start guide here. We have some cables for power. And what you'll not see is a USB power adapter. So one of the things that you might need to do is plug this into an old phone charger, but in many cases you can attach it to a USB port on your television and have the TV supply power to the Roku. This is the Roku itself. There is not much to it as you can see. So you just plug in your HDMI cable in the back there and your power over here, and there's a reset button as well. This unit is uh, required to sit underneath your TV so that the infrared receiver here can get the signal from the remote. So you do need to make this visible. And again, underneath the TV is probably the best way to do it so that when you point the remote at the front here, it can pick it up. They also give you some tape in here as well in case your Roku is sliding around too much. You can tape this to the bottom and stick it in place. The remote is their basic remote. This does not control your television on the low end model here. Other models do have remotes that are more robust. So this is only going to control the Roku itself, volume control and everything else you'll have to do on your TV. And what you need to do first, of course, is put the batteries in here. So let me do that real quick. And then we'll go through the process of connecting this up to our TV. All right, so we're ready to get this thing hooked up. There's not much to it. So what you need to do is plug the HDMI cable into a free HDMI port on your television. And the other end here plugs into the back of the Roku. And then you will need to also plug in the USB cable here for power. And again, you can plug this cable into a free port on the back of your television, a USB port if you have one. If you don't, you're going to need to find an old USB phone charger or go out and buy a new one. You don't have to buy a very powerful one, just a five volt, one amp USB charger will do. And you can take the included USB cable here and plug it into the back. And there's no on or off switch. So once you get this thing plugged in, it will immediately boot up here as you can see. So what we're gonna let this thing do is go through its boot process. And when it's done, we'll pick it up and see what our next steps are. All right, so now it's asking us for a language and I can use the remote now to browse through my options. I'm gonna go with English here. And remember, we've got the Roku here positioned in front of my television. By the way, one other option you can do with the tape is stick it to your TV underneath like this if you wanted to have it operate that way, not sitting on something. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is go over to English because that's the language that I speak, somewhat okay. 
And what it's going to do now is look for our wireless access points. So what you want to do is connect it to your Wi-Fi. And I'm going to choose this one. And what you have to do next is type in your wireless uh, password with your remote here. This might take a while depending on what your wireless password is. So I'm going to go ahead and type mine in now. And when I'm done with that, we'll connect to the Wi-Fi and go to our next step. All right, so we've typed in my wireless password now correctly, and it looks like we are now connected. Now, almost every time you set one of these Roku's up, it's going to need an update. So what we're going to do is hit the OK button here and have the Roku run through its software update. This won't take all that long, uh, but just be prepared to have it do that. So we're going to let it do its update. It's going to restart. And when it's done, we can move on to the next step. All right, so we got through that step. And the next option here is to click Continue. And what we need to do now is activate our account. And they make this relatively easy because they can email the activation to you. So you don't have to type in your password on the remote control here. So what we're going to do is enter my email address here and then it will email me, and then we can pick it up from there. All right, I clicked on the link, and because we were already logged in from creating our account before, I am now going to name my device here. I'm going to set its location. I'll just put it in my media room here. I'm just gonna call it basement so I can identify it. I've got a bunch of Roku devices here. And the next step here is ju to just acknowledge the terms and conditions, which you have to do. And we're going to click on Continue now. And this is where they're going to try to uh, upsell you on some stuff. So I'm going to say, uh, yes, I pay for cable right now, and I'm with uh, Xfinity. And what you can actually do is use these Roku's as a uh, cable box, and it will also help you log into some of the things that you get through your cable provider. It's also going to ask us what we're currently subscribed to. So right now I have Netflix, Apple TV, Discovery Plus, Peacock, <laughs> Prime Disney Plus, um, and we'll go ahead and click continue from here. And then it can also look at your interests and build up some things to your lineup that it thinks it might find useful for you. And one of the best parts about Roku, I think, is that they have a very good free movies and TV section. So that's one thing that I would activate, but you might want to activate some of these other options as well, depending on what your preferences are. And then, of course, they've got some other things you can add to your home screen if you want. All of these providers pay to be on this screen, so these are really advertisements. But if you have a few uh, services that were not listed on that prior screen, you can add them here if you want. And I'm just going to click Continue now. And what should happen, hopefully, after this is done, uh, is we will get another set of advertising here. <laughs> then we can uh, just scroll down to the bottom here and click on Continue. And it says now setup is complete. And if we go back to the Roku now, uh, you will see that everything is getting uh, downloaded and set up to our device here. So let's let this run out and get all the channels updated. And when it's done, we'll see what it has waiting for us when we return. Stay tuned. All right, we are now all done. And it's actually pointing us to the Roku mobile app here, which I would recommend downloading because it adds some features to the device. But we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go over here to All Done, and now we'll be presented with our home screen here and a little introductory video. So I'm going to hit Home here just to get off of this, but this is actually a pretty helpful way to get started on the Roku platform. And what we'll do now is hit Home, and your home screen is going to look different than mine based on what you have decided to download to the device. But it's pretty simple and self-explanatory. You have your apps here that you can navigate through. If you want to find other apps to download, you can go over here to Streaming Channels. And this is essentially their app store where you can find things to download. And like the uh, earlier experience here getting onboarded, you're going to have some things that are featured that are being um, essentially advertising, to be uh, frank, in the top part here. But the rest of it, you can go through and browse or search for something specific. So you do have the ability to quickly navigate through and find what you're looking for. I've always found the interface on the Roku to be pretty clean. Uh, you will see a lot of advertising here on the side, but it's never all that intrusive in the main interface. Uh, there's a bunch of free stuff like the Roku channel. They actually have a whole section of free stuff. So if you hit the left button here, if you don't happen to see these uh, words here on the side, you can go over to Featured Free 
and you get a good selection of free content, not only from Roku, but from some of the other free providers out there as well. So a lot of free stuff without having to pay for anything, uh, and you can get going pretty quickly here. Um, so let's move on now, though, to getting the mobile app set up. And the reason why I like the mobile app is that it enables keyboard functionality and a few other things. So if you have to log into your Netflix account, for example, you don't have to navigate with the remote to type in the password rolling forward. So let's get that app downloaded and connected to our Roku here. All right, so here is the Roku app, and you can find this on the Google Play Store or on the iPhone through their App Store. And one of the first things you want to do is go in and get your account attached to the remote app here. So if I click on that little person up there, I can sign in right here. So let me sign into my Roku account now on the app, and then we'll see what we can do with the app. All right, so we have now connected the app to my Roku account. And the next step is we have to connect to the Roku on our local network. Now it's important for the phone running the app to be on the same network as your Roku. And in most homes, that's not hard to do because your Wi-Fi is shared with the whole house. But if you have a crazy network set up, just know that the phone has to be on the same network as your device for this to work correctly. And what I'm gonna do now is click on here where it says connect to a device. And when I do that, I will see a list of all the Rokus that I have in my home. Now remember, we called this one uh, the Express Basement, I believe. So I'm going to scroll here until I see it. And here it is. It says a new device was found. So I'm going to tap on that. And now we are connected to it. And right now we're controlling that device. So for example, if I go over here to the remote, you'll see a visual representation of what the Roku remote typically looks like. And if I switch over here and I tap on maybe the home button here, you can see I am controlling this just like I would on the regular remote. And that's just one of its great little features that it has here. I can also do voice searches, which is something you can't do with the remote that comes with this low-end model. So you actually pick up features that the low-end model doesn't have. So for example, if I tap on the microphone button here, find Star Trek The Next Generation, what will happen is, is it will now do a voice search, which again, you can't do with this model out of the box. Another cool feature that I like quite a bit on the remote is the headphone option here. So if you have headphones hooked up to your phone, you can tap on this button here and you can enable private listening. So what will happen here is that it will route all of the audio out of your Roku to your phone. And if you have headphones hooked up, you can listen to the Roku without disturbing a partner in the bedroom or whatever. So you have some really cool functionality here, again, that is not... Uh, usually included with this model of the Roku. Now let's go over to Netflix here real quick, and I'm pretty sure that it's not logged into my account, and I want to show you how we can use the keyboard to type in our password. So let's jump in there and see what that looks like. All right, so here we are on the Netflix homepage, and if I click on Sign In, uh, what typically happens is that you get this screen that you have to log in with. Now they do give you the option now to sign in from the web, so that's one way you might be able to do this easier. But if you are on an area of the screen where there's text input, on the app here, if you click on the keyboard icon, I'll give you a better look at that here. It's right, right there. If you click on the keyboard icon, you can see it pulls up a keyboard. And I can start typing now with my phone, which is a lot quicker. And if you have one of those password managers, you could probably paste in your password uh, from the phone and keep your secure passwords going without having to futz around with the remote here all that much. So I really think the, uh, the remote app that Roku offers um, brings a lot of value to the product that goes well beyond its initial feature set. And the remote is free. It works great. You have the other option here to even load up some of your apps directly from the menu here. So I could click on Netflix, for example, and that would boot me right into Netflix. So you could uh, set up some buttons on the app here that uh, can get you into things a little quicker there. So lots of cool stuff here with the app. So definitely get that installed around the time that you set the Roku up. And we're going to be back with a full video about all the things you can do with the Roku Express because there is, again, a lot of value packed into this thing. And if you're just using this on a 1080p television, you're probably not going to need more than this little guy to get the job done. So we're going to come back with more on the Roku Express, and that's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.
This channel is brought to you by the Lawn.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Omda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lawntv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lawntv slash s.